Hi. Um, how is everybody? Uh, didn't want to break my tradition. So here I am again. I just can't stay away. In fact, if my husband allowed it, I'd probably just go live every night. Hang out with you guys. Answer some questions. Um, oh, let me see who's here. Hi from Scotland. Oh my gosh, it's so late in Scotland. Hi. Thanks for staying awake. Uh, hi, Argentina. Can't wait to come and see you guys there. Um, hopefully next year, when COVID feels a little bit better, I can come out and see you all in Argentina. Hello from Queens. Just up the street. I'll come see you anytime. As long as you've got a nice cup of tea waiting for me. Uh, Chile, hi. Hi, hi, Chile. Hello, Tammy. Guatemala, wow, I really want to go to Guatemala. Philippines, hi. Australia, amazing, all the way over the other side of the world. Hi. Where, who, where else have we got? I'm going to do some quick... Sh uh, I can say hello. Um, I don't know your name, though. A. Pavlan, was it? Went away quickly. Hang on. Hi, hi, Poland. Brazil. Hi, Brazil. Hi, Saudi Arabia. A. Pavon20. You asked me to say hello. I am saying hello. Um... Hi, Mexico. Hi, Vancouver. Indonesia. Okay, so I am going to be joined tonight by someone very special. Uh, and we got to have our first scene together in tonight's episode, which you guys are going to hopefully see in an hour, just over an hour. Um, and I know a lot of you are watching from around the world as we just, Brian Cayman, just there, as we just established. So we won't give anything away. I'm very anxious to let you be surprised for the first time when you see the episode. So we're not gonna talk so much about the episode. I'm just gonna have a little chat with Christina. So let me just find her on here. I know she's already here. She said hi to me. Okay. Okay, let's see if she still wants to join me. Hi! Hi, Janet. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm uh, just chilling at home. I just, I have a light because it was dark in here. So I got a light and I just ch pressed a button by accident and the lighting's changed. It's like I've got a disco going on in here. It looks really nice. Thanks. It's a bit yeah. warmer, isn't it? <laughs> um, so how are you? I'm well. Um, yeah, I've been, um, you know, today was sunny out and it's like amazing how that's just an instant mood burster, mood booster. <laughs> For some people, it might be a burster, you know, yeah. some people might just like it when it's gray outside and miserable and freezing, but I am not one of those people. Um, yeah, it was so lovely today in New York. Uh, and everyone was outside and it felt like there was a different mood, didn't there? I don't know if you were out and about in the city or anything. No, I, I was mostly inside. I had some meetings <laughs> and things, so I was in front of the computer. Oh, I'm sorry. But sorry. I did go outside of my balcony and I saw two dogs wrestling and playing with each other. I saw this <laughs> um, cockroach that I uh, had caught in a plastic container one night and I just ran out and just put it on the balcony because I didn't want to see it or deal with it mm -hmm. and then it's still there because <laughs> I oh my still gosh. haven't thrown is it, it away. still there right now it's dead it's just outside hanging out in a container wow you think it's so. dead are you sure are you <laughs> does it make do um cockroaches like live in like a big group of them or can you just get stray ones I, I'm not versed on cockroaches I mean I've heard that if you see one there's probably more but um 
I've seen two this winter. And they were Oh my god, there's one behind you. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I need an exterminator. <laughs> but it's near. Okay, City. so <laughs> anyone out there who is tuning into this live right now, uh where, you, you're Brooklyn, right, Christy? We, yes. won't, we, don't, we won't give out your address, but <laughs> she may need an exterminator. So I actually, um, we had rats, not in our house, but in our trash can outside. Um, we're going to talk about other things, guys, but we're just going <laughs> to chat about this first. Um, and we had to get an exterminator. So if you need a rat exterminator, I know one. I found yeah. it on the thumbtack worked out perfectly we don't have them anymore so I think it's important for people to know what it's like to live in New York City you know so. yeah I think so too I think people think it's all like glamorous yeah. and it is that but it's also <laughs> <laughs> not so glamorous um so tonight's episode was one of our first episodes working together um Last week, I did a chat with Alejandro, who plays Casey. Um, last week, I, I opened up sort of questions from everyone else, and then I went through to look at what the questions were, um, and there were so many. So I feel like it would be nice to have a chat first, and then maybe we'll look through the questions at the end and see if there's oh. any that I can ask you. Sounds good. Um, but yeah, so this was our first episode working together. I felt like we were, I felt like the stuff, the, the, the play between us worked really well. And, you know, Darnell, our director, she said the same. She said that it was like a little comedy duo, which, you know, obviously that meant that I was taking the, the Kapoor role. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it really, I really enjoyed working with you. It was really fun. Me too. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, I think we hadn't ever worked together, just the two of us. So no, the no, those treat. were our first one-on-one -on -one scenes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was a great. We had a. It's a great episode, I think, and the stuff that we got to play with, and the other person in the scene with us who we got to play with a bit was a lot of fun too, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Without yeah. giving mm -hmm. anything away. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was. Um, uh, I love doing the comedy stuff with you and in general I think it's great because yes the show has a lot of you know um, more heartfelt emotional storylines but then to have like some lightness and some levity is is good yeah I think it's so important for the balance of the show to be right I think if it was all if it was all tears and sad stories, then I don't think it would be as enjoyable to watch. You know, you don't want to just be, oh, uh, did you just do a little filter then? <laughs> I am. Um, <laughs> I just, I was like, oh, I feel like I, I was like, maybe I'll just turn it off or turn it on. And then it and went to a weird one by accident. <laughs> oh, should we, should we both? I, I feel like I want to put one on. I've not done it yet. Let's do it. Let's get a little filter on. Uh, which one should I do? Oh, this one's a good one, I think. What? Ooh, I love that purple hair on you. Yeah, right? Chrissy, I saw it on Chrissy Teigen, and I went for the same thing. Um, oh, that's nice. Yeah. Cute. Chic. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yes, continue, continue. Um, yeah, so I think it's like... Uh, especially after this past week's episode, which was, um, you know, it was, it was heavy, you know, it was, it was pretty sad. So nice to have a little, uh, to like have a, be a little lighter this week, you know, just keep it, keep it, uh, you know, keep it, have a little change here and there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think so too. I think your the stuff, I mean, I met, I messaged you, um, or maybe I Instagrammed while I was watching the episode about like how great your work was and how much I really enjoyed, you know, the story itself. Obviously I'd already heard at the table read and I knew it was going to be a powerful one. What I didn't realize is that when it aired months later, it would be even more relevant to what was going on. Um, and that 
is, you know, a real shame, but also a credit to you who is bringing that story just to, to the screen and to share it, Sherry as well. You know, the, the whole right, the, all of the writers in the writer's room that seem to keep doing this with stories that seem to be reflecting what's going on in society, sometimes even before it's happened. It's true. Um, when, you know, the, I guess at the beginning of the pandemic, we had seen a rise in anti-Asian racism and violence. Um, and that's what sort of sparked the writer's idea to do this storyline as, you know, we've been your work in the first episode um, showing the toll that COVID took on the doctors was just so moving. And I thought just an incredible tribute to all of our healthcare workers. Um, the work that you and Casey did was just so moving. And I think that really set the tone and started, you know, the season has um, been a continual appreciation um, for healthcare workers. Um, mm -hmm. And this is like another side to the story, which is um, the anti-Asian violence and, and racism. And what's really tough is so many healthcare workers are Asian American. Um, and uh, for example, they're the number of Filipino American um, nurses is very high, the percentage. and. Um, I was reading a, an article about how they have had a disproportionate number of deaths in their community um, in this, the, the healthcare uh, workers that are Filipino. So uh, I was really so grateful that they um, decided to write this storyline because it's, uh, it's happening and they're not afraid to to tell it and the fact that um, the racism starting really at the beginning of this year, 2021, there's been a huge uptick. Um, it's just really unfortunate uh, that the timing <laughs> was even, it was even more poignant because of what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. Do you think, um you don't have to answer this. Do you think that, have you ever experienced this kind of thing in your lifetime? This like racism that you felt like was, or you felt like an energy coming from people in this sort of like way that sort of happened because of various different reasons, but you know, a big one was in politics, a certain politician using racial slurs to describe like coronavirus stuff. We don't even need to talk about that. It's like over and done with, he's gone. But do you think that you felt there was a, a shift in energies coming at you personally? Yeah, unfortunately. Um, I did have a, sort of a, there's been a se several incidences. Um, so recently, about a month and a half ago, I I went to a rally um, in March in Manhattan to protest the the racism and violence. And as I was walking home, I walked through Union Square, and someone yelled yelled at me, "You're a dirty." A thing pig and that was um, it was broad daylight you know um, and it was just in and, and people so people sorry. who don't know New York City that's like a very very popular spot you know mm -hmm. um, so that was tough just and and the thing is you know, when it happens, you, your first thing to think, you, the first thing you think of is safety, right? So like, what do I do? And I, and I, and I unfortunately, people have a fight or flight response. My response is frozen. <laughs> so I'm always just like, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I just did keep walking. Um, so that happened and 
there have been other things and unfortunately I have tried so I, I took a road trip over the summer across the country um, and this is kind of sad but I tried to hide my Asian Americanness when I would go into rest stops so I'd have my mask on I put my hair up underneath a hat I'd have sunglasses on and I just kind of run in and out because I was afraid <laughs> so my god you're gonna make me cry <laughs> I just think that's horrible because you're like one of the hmm um, you're like one of the sweetest people I've ever met. So the fact that, and bubbliest, happiest people, like every time I see you, you've got a smile on your face and such a positive energy that you would feel like you'd have to hide um, who you are in order to be safe, not even for any other reason than to feel safe. Uh, Thank you. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so let's lighten it up so we don't, <laughs> yeah. so we don't so we, cry with everyone. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's talk about your trajectory. So you're an actress. When did you decide you wanted to be an actress? Um, I, so I grew up as a figure skater. Um, so I was performing. That does not surprise me. You look like a figure skater. <laughs> you do. And the strong thighs. <laughs> no, it's that like grace. And you look like you would take someone down. Like you'd take a bitch down. Like I Tonya them if you needed to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally would. <laughs> um, right. So that was my childhood was like performing on the ice. Um, and I just loved, I loved the performance aspect. Um, but... And so then when I stopped ice skating, I wanted to act, but I kind of, um, I didn't think that it was something that I would be allowed to do, um, not just from my parents, but also because I didn't see a lot of representation on TV or in movies. So, so you just think didn't that think that there would be a spot for you on no. when you, because everything you were watching was white people. <laughs> more more than likely like yeah. myself um but see so there wasn't someone that you, you thought well where would how would that be a job for me yeah I I mean you know when you're young you don't really understand things so I just jump from I don't see it therefore there must be it must not be allowed or you know there are no roles for us they don't they don't there's there's nothing um, it's not something that I would be able to do because there, there wouldn't be any jobs. So, um, I kind of just suppressed that desire for a really long time, just suppressed it. And, but it just kept bubbling up. Like it just was something that I couldn't keep down. And I was, uh, I was watching a play, um, in New York and I just kept this, this feeling of where I was like, I just want to, I don't want to get up, <laughs> you know, like I want to be up there. <laughs> That's, that means you've got the bug. I know. I, I go to watch plays now and I get jealous of the people on stage. I'm like, oh, I, just, I want to be there too. Yeah. <laughs> I so see that funny. hunger in you too. Cause I remember yeah. when we were talking about some of the Oscar nominated films this year and you're like yeah that's that I want you know like I want to dig into that so I love seeing that hunger in you <laughs> <laughs> it's important you know it's important to admit that you this is like a difficult profession um it's very competitive as most people know uh and it takes a lot of guts to kind of put yourself out there and even you know with the storylines that reflect something in yourself having to like look at that or the way you've been like you have to you have to dig deep and go relive things that are painful so you gotta you gotta want it otherwise it ain't worth it right yeah because there's so much you know emotional ups and downs and rejections and if oh, you so much rejection for, yeah right yeah. it's like compared to acting the rejection and dating is like oh whatever you know <laughs> easy peasy <laughs> i get a free drink out of it <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah you don't get that at auditions I don't, they don't give you anything 
<laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> Except for a little bit of shame. <laughs> um, so you didn't feel like it was, you was represented and uh, you were, you didn't feel like there was like a, you didn't feel like representation in things that you were watching or anything that was available to you. Your parents, there was some opposition. You couldn't stop. You just feel like, no, I have to do this. Yeah. When did your break, later. when did your like break come? Like. My, well. So first I have to say I um, went to law school. So. Um, <laughs> oh, I knew was, this. Yeah, you <laughs> uh, so that happened. And then after that, I was like, you know what? What are you waiting for? So everyone out there, if there's something that you're dying to do, just do it, you know, go for it. You, you, as people say, YOLO, you only live once. I think that's really true, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so I started going to acting school and I- Like started, full time like, or like on the weekends or? It was nights and weekends. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't really have much of a social life, but- And are you working was, as a lawyer, by the way, during the daytime? Yeah. Or like a paralegal or something, you are? Like I a full on lawyer? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. So you're working as a lawyer. You're also going to acting school in the evenings and the weekends. I mean, that's how much you wanted it. So you already had a full time job and you were like, no, I have to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And take note, people, she went to school for it. She didn't just go, oh, I'm just going to go be an actor. Like you were like, I'm going to let this is how I'm going to learn my craft and hopefully get a job oh, yeah. on like a hit medical drama one day. <laughs> <laughs> honestly that like the i if you had told me that like something like this would happen i would have been like no way you know i i just i just wanted to do it and i thought it would be fun even if it was just a hobby and then once i started doing it i was like oh wow i think um this is something that i love enough to really try and um so i was trying to do both and and i didn't really have the energy to do both and then i just kind of it took a lot of courage like it's, I'm not saying this is easy folks so like if there's something you want to do I know it's hard it's like you gotta you know you gotta work your way to it, it wasn't an overnight decision by any means mm -hmm. you know um but I finally you know just, just there's some things that you can't help you just have to do it so I started um you know going to a lot of auditions and it took, it took, you know, it takes time. I don't know if people realize how much time <laughs> it takes before you like book something. So I would say the mm -hmm. first thing I booked was a Madam Secretary um, role. And I got to work with BB Newworth, which was amazing for mm -hmm. like, well, actually no, first thing is like an indie movie. And I had a tiny, tiny role with like an Elizabeth, Elizabeth Moss in the movie. So that was like my first ever scene. And yeah. she was, and she's like, so, so good. So that she's was incredible. Amazing. Yeah. She's such an amazing actress. Was she, did you get to know her at all or? No, it was like literally like one scene. I was there for like yeah. three hours. So not really, you know, <laughs> I knew that she, I found out that she has cats and she seemed, <laughs> and she was, but her work was just amazing. And I thought what was really cool is um, she just snaps in so quickly. You know, she's like in the scene, fully in it. And then it's cut. And then she's just like, you know, back to whatever. And then action. And, you know, she's just so laser focused and jumps in so quickly. It was really impressive. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, yeah. Keep going, keep going. Because I want to ask you some questions about this. Uh, yeah, so then I did Madam Secretary. Um, I did a couple other small, you know, small roles, Mozart in the Jungle. Uh, and then I did, and then I uh, booked the role of Agnes. Um, so that was like three years ago. And uh, got to be in the pilot with all of you. And who could have thought we'd be here today? 
because mm-hmm. uh, I didn't know if Agnes would be back after that episode. So yeah, when you booked the role, was it like a reoccurring, which just for everyone listening, it's like a re- there's like a guest star. So that's someone that just comes in and does one episode. Um, and then there is a reoccurring, which is someone who will just keep popping in and out, or then there's a story arc, or they'll say, we just want you for three episodes. And then there's a series regulars um, who's, who are in every episode. So when you booked the show, it was? Um, the, it didn't say at all anything. Just, um, yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> we'll see. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, because, you know, it, it, um, I'm not sure if they really, you know, since it first, you know, they filmed the pilot and then, uh, for people who don't know, then it has to get picked up, you know? So obviously they ha- lock in people like Janet and the other series regulars and get them in tight so that if it does get picked up, that they're, <laughs> then they'll be back. Uh, but I don't think they, you know, worry too much about the, the, you know, more secondary characters until after, because who knows if they'll get picked up. Yeah, they tend to, they tend to just hope everyone's available. Um, but I guess there's a certain, there's only so many people that they can actually hold for a period of time. Right, right, right. Yeah. And then every, and then everyone who's involved always hopes it's picked up because then there's like, oh, if it gets picked up, there's a chance of us all coming back again. Yeah. And I, I remember, um, I was at a friend's wedding when I saw the news that it got picked up. Um, so, so fun to get to celebrate and I was already at a party, you know? Mm-hmm. So that was um, pretty cool to hear that. Yeah. Uh, and so your character has kind of grown exponentially, right? Like it's gone from supporting character to you have like some, like I would say, I hope my co-stars don't mind me saying this, but your storyline in last week's episode was one of the biggest storylines and was so important. And one of that scene, like it just was like such a heartbreaking scene was one of the biggest tearjerkers. So you've kind of now stolen the show. <laughs> you've stolen it right Get out it. from Ryan Eggold. Yeah, you, you know, you snooze, you lose, Eggold. You lost it. You lost it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Ruthless. I'm ruthless. He never saw you coming. <laughs> he never saw you coming, but there you were. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's a, it's a pretty big, over the last three years, it's a pretty big trajectory. So I think it's probably a good thing that you gave up your lawyer job. <laughs> Let's hope so. No, but yeah, it's been, yeah, who would have thought? It's been just like such a delight to have um, Agnes grow and see her uh you know, be forced to take on more responsibility. This uh-huh. season. So, wow. What do you think is going to, do you know what's going to happen with Agnes for the end of the season? Um, I, I don't, I don't really know. Um, I don't want to give anything away because there's some funny and juicy things coming up. Um, um, and are you going to stay with us? Do you know, for as long as we can have you? (laughs) Well, I would love to. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I honestly don't know, you know, um, what the the writers have in mind, if they have anything in mind for Agnes um, going forward. If so, then yes, obviously, I I love working on this show. Um, It's such a all of you, the main cast are incredible to work with and our crew is fantastic. I mean, honestly. Mm -hmm. Shout out to our crew. They really are like out of this world. They work so hard. So hard and and this was really not an easy time to be working when you're, you know, I know some people, it's hard for me to hear people complain about wearing a mask when you think about all the people that we work with who are in masks and shields Mm -hmm. 
and for 12, 14 hours a day. So yeah. I don't think that people should complain about wearing a mask for like 20 minutes to go to the grocery store or something. No. You know, it's, it really does put it in perspective, doesn't it? And I, I've never heard one crew member complain. And I've, I've egged them on. I've been like, do you not just want to take that thing off? Is that not uncomfortable? Because you know what I'm like, of course I would do that. And they're like, yes, it's not, it's not comfortable. But you know, it's like good just to be back at work. It's like just the, the, the kindest people that we get to go to work with and good people. It makes us like our own little bubble uh which yeah is different from what's out there on the other side yeah i mean for you so for me this was like such a um it was like an odd and strange normal thing to have to be able to go to work and be around a lot of people and make small talk and have social interaction and whereas i know the most people in the world don't have that right now and and it really kind of helped my sanity um, during the pandemic. Do you feel like it was, you know, like, wasn't that just such a special thing to have that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it was interesting because you go from being, you know, with everyone every single day for years, really. And then what happened happened and the whole world shut down and it was all so quick that we didn't really even say goodbye to each other on the new Amsterdam set. And then there was, it just all felt so rushed, didn't it? And to be away from everyone who's in your like constant everyday life. I mean, I know the rest of the world sort of went through it too, but it's quite intense when you work on a show. I think you kind of live in an intense way with each other. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was, it was nice to be back and to have all gone through that separately away from each other and then to come back. But what we were shooting felt like, you know, the episode we were shooting before, as we were shutting down was Din's episode. Mm -hmm. uh, and as the pandemic hit, that being what it was, what the episode it was, and then airing some of that and knowing that was gonna air, it just all felt very meta, a bit like what, you went through as well where something is like it's spookily accurate for what's going on in the world the work and <laughs> you don't know how the two correlate so much you know I know I'm like can they write something very awesome happening so that yeah. maybe that will come true <laughs> I mean if only there was more positivity in our show that's what it needs more awesome maybe like you winning the lottery. Yeah. You and me winning the lottery. No, that would not be awesome. Yeah. Like, there's <laughs> got to be something good that they can write that we want to happen in the world. Um, maybe you guys could come up with some suggestions and send it to us. Yes, oh. yes. <laughs> what is the most amazing thing that you can think of that we want the writers to write and then it's going to happen because they're so good at predicting the world. <laughs> and we're going to promise that we're going to make them write it as well. Mm -hmm. That's we're gonna be like, come on, come on. We'll egg them on and they'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I've got some questions here that I'm just gonna have a look. I've got about five more minutes, so hang on. Um, someone just wrote, sorry, I'm just looking at a question. Someone just wrote, we would like to see Lauren and Agnes in a relationship. What do you all think? Um, with each other or I think separately. they mean yeah I think they mean well, maybe they mean separately they need to clarify before we can comment on this uh, okay oh here's a question for you uh have you ever been to the Philippines I haven't. It's definitely on my list. So my family, um, some of my family is in Taiwan. And before the pandemic, I was, I would go to Taiwan every year to be my grandma and mm -hmm. my, my aunts, uncles and cousins. And then I would always go somewhere as well. So I did Japan, I did 
um, Malaysia, went to Indonesia, Bali. Um, so each year it's like somewhere else in, in Southeast Asia or, or in East Asia. So the Philippines is definitely high up on my list for the next time I'm up there. Yeah, I really want to go too. It looks beautiful. Oh. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, so this question is to both of us, but I'm going to let you answer it first. This is from Blackmore987. Is that your real name? Um, okay, uh, the question is, what are, your most, what are you most proud of? Hmm. So low, it's a big one, right? Well, do you know what? I'll answer first because it's not really a big one for me. Um, you go first. I'm most proud of my daughter. Mm. I just think it all, oh, it changes it. It makes it a much easier question when I've got her because it's true and I don't have to think about anything that, anything that I've done. It's just like, I had my daughter and she's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's beautiful. Uh that is, I mean, it's such a huge responsibility to take care and raise another human being. So, of course, it makes sense that, that immediately pops to mind as the thing that you're most proud of. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what about you? Um, gosh. Uh, I don't really know. I think, um, I mean, I guess I would have to say, you know, just try you know getting into acting because that was that was really scary for me and it took um I think I I didn't know myself super well for a long time and it and then acting kind of really was the way that I got to know myself so I'm so glad that I did it because I it kind of really helped me um as a person just a whole person to um feel like I really came into myself and wasn't doing a job that I didn't really connect with, you know? Did you, I've always thought that if I wasn't an actor, I would quite like to be a lawyer. Because um, <laughs> it kind of feels a little bit like there's a bit of a performance element to being a lawyer. Yeah. Do you know I what I mean? Like you're, te you're telling a story a certain, you're setting a scene. Yeah, that's true. I think if you're a courtroom lawyer, you know, if you're a litigator mm -hmm. and you're doing that, then that's definitely true. Um, and that's actually what I thought was the kind of lawyer I wanted to be. I was like, oh, yeah, I'll get to, like, be, you know. Um, Ali McBeal, right? You thought you'd be like a Lucy Liu, Ali McBeal, yeah. RJ. You know. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, sadly, <laughs> being a real life lawyer is not like on TV. Um, and of course, being a real life doctor is exactly like on New Amsterdam. One hundred percent. I'm. I mean, I'm pretty good at it now. I feel like if there was an emergency, I could probably fix it. Yeah, you'll just like stab someone in the throat, open up an air hole, <laughs> no yeah. problem. Deliver a baby with like a <laughs> kitchen knife yeah. when it needs to happen. Why not? Yeah. I've done it before. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do have a doctor friend and it's funny because whenever he talks to me, he just like talks to me as if I'm a doctor and he's like, oh yeah, I forget that you're not a doctor. <laughs> Like, no, I just play one on TV. Oh, that's so cute that you forget. <laughs> but but to be honest, you're already a lot smarter than most actors, including myself. I left school when I was 16, so no, you're no. a lawyer. You're not, you're a lawyer and an actor. Like, you're okay. like, oh, I'm scared. I'm like a friend but of for you. for all the fans out there, you should know that Janet always has a very dense non-fiction book when I see her on set. So, you know, for me, when I read, I'm often like, let me find something that's just escapist. I want to get, Janet's always learning something. So, you know, she is brilliant. So don't, don't say that about yourself. You're really smart <laughs> and you know it. <laughs> 
right? I, well, I, I do always have a book. I don't always get to finish them, but it's the only place I get to read now is when I come to work. <laughs> I hear you. Oh, I can't read anymore. Oh, like you're you're learning, and I'm always like, oh, let me hide the. <laughs> but like, well, I did tell you that I also wanted to do what you did with the uh, you do improv comedy, and that was something that I felt like I really wanted to do, and it sort of scared me because, you know, I I was in a movie. Um, I think we spoke about this with Paul Rudd and Elizabeth Banks, this movie called Our Idiot Brother. And everyone just was going completely off the script and improvising. And I was like, oh, think of something funny. I think of it. And before I can even say it, it's already moved on. Like the scenes are, it all just happened so quickly. And I was like, whoa, what is this? <laughs> so I think I would quite like to be able to learn to do that and not yeah, be afraid of it. What do you think? During hiatus, will you take a class? Yeah, I think I'm going to try and do that. There's, there's a hundred different things I want to try and do during hiatus, but I think that would be a good one for me to prioritize. Um, yeah, I would like to do it in person. So if there is the option to do that, which maybe it won't be this hiatus. Um, True. It is more fun in person. Especially when you're first starting it. I think once yeah. you've already established a, a routine with it, but I think I'm uncomfortable enough on, in, on like our table reads on Zoom, let alone like around strangers at like an improv class. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I started doing those classes because I wanted to get comfortable with failure, you know, because you just go up there and it could be horrible. It could be so horrible. And, and you can't really hide because let's say you're doing an improv show and you have a scene with someone and it's like terrible. You then go back to the back, the back wall and stand on the line. Like that's where you stand and wait and you're like mortified, but you still have to like keep it together because, mm -hmm. and pay attention because you have to do another one. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. That's, that's a good lesson to learn, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Actually, I think that is a yeah, good lesson like, to learn. Control. Who knows what's going to happen? Could be brilliant. Could be terrible. Who cares? It's not about <laughs> that. It's not about the outcome. Yeah. Sounds like uh, life in general. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like Instagram lives for me. Could be great. Could be terrible. We'll just give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask one. you one more. I'm going to ask you one more question. Um, this is from Alicia Moran. Moran? Alicia Moran, 18. What other cast member would you love to play? Hmm. Uh, you know, I think that, um, I think your character and, um, yeah. I think your character is super interesting because there's so much emotional like trauma and growth and you know that that is really fascinating and it's also so Yeah, there's a lot of different layers to to blue. So many layers. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could also be because of the way that you play it and the layers that you bring to it, right? So, so no, that's it's all, all it's all on the page. I only play what's on the page. No. <laughs> uh, right, of course. <laughs> no, it's your brilliance. Um, but yeah, it's also like kind of exciting because you get to like run around the emergency department and you're like putting out all these fires and it's really hectic and you know. So I think that's fun. Um, yeah, there's more of a physicality to it. They they get they did give me a lot of physical stuff. Um, sometimes unwanted, to be honest. I mean, I was like, oh, I've got to wear this boot for how many episodes <laughs> in the second season? <laughs> oh, right. I forgot mm. about that. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. How about you? Which one would you want to play? Hmm. I think I would be Iggy. I think it would be Iggy for me. Um, just, I I go back and forth on this, but I would really like to 
I'm I'm interested in like therapy and I feel like the scene play and the the stories that he gets and the guest stars are always like he gets the majority of the the bulk of whatever's going on the emotional stuff so I think that I'm like oh I wish I got to do that I got to be in there with him a couple of times um and that room and the whole way the scenes play the interplay of the scenes is really I don't get to do that a lot as Lauren so I guess I would want to play the antithesis of what I'm already doing, you know? Yeah. And I think that's right. Cause he gets to really delve into all of his patients. Mm -hmm. Like he gets you know, to sit down, have yeah. a conversation one-on-one. -on -one, whereas I'm like going over here, going over here, da -da -da, like stabbing this person with a needle. It's so all go, go, go. That's true. He, yeah. His, it's quieter, more desk time. <laughs> also, I think I want to shout out, to all of the therapists right now in the world who are doing they are working <laughs> some overtime right now. Oh <laughs> I was thinking about that earlier today. I was like, who is supporting them? Because they're like supporting all of us right now. Yeah. Well, I I actually went back into therapy during the pandemic. Definitely something I needed, but I had the time and I was like, I just, I need it now. Like this now more than ever. And I think a lot of people, I bet a lot of therapists were like, oh, my phone is like blowing up now. <laughs> so just need a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, same, same here. I did too mm -hmm. last summer. And I was thinking about that um, when I talked to my therapist yesterday, because I forget we were talking about empathy and she was like, yeah, sometimes it's like when I talk patients like you can't she like really feels the level of pain that they do you know I'm just like wow that's so thank you to her and to everyone else who's doing that yeah work. I feel bad on my therapist if she feels the level of pain <laughs> um so I want to just bring it back to the thing we were talking about at the beginning of the conversation before we go and get ready to watch the show. Mm -hmm. You did a Zoom, um, which I couldn't uh, go to, unfortunately, so I didn't get to hear the panel that you guys did, you and Daniel did. Um, what, bringing awareness to this, what, what can we do? People that have heard this, like what, what can we do? Like, mm -hmm. how can we help? How can we help, I guess, yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, number one, I would say um, whatever platform you have or, you know, it doesn't matter, just use your voice, talk to your friends, your family, um, point stuff out. If you hear people making inappropriate jokes or offhand comments, you know, start a conversation with that's number one mm -hmm. amplify if you can um i would say that there okay so what's been really heartwarming to me is to see how many um organizations are coming out uh to support the community and you know these community organizers and activists have been doing this work for a really, really long time um so it's not just like a recent response. And, and um, th so some examples of that, uh, there have been, um, there's this organi organization called Safe Walk MIC where people can request someone who, to accompany them to go to walk to the subway or take the subway if they don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. um, so you can look for, for organizations in your community doing that you can volunteer your time you can donate money if you have the ability that's so great that's that's such a great idea yeah and there's another woman in new york city she um is raising money so that if you're uh someone who feels unsafe you can request um you can request a ride like a money to take uber or lyft and they'll pay for it, you know, stuff like that. Um, and there's some, there's so many examples of like, um, you know, because the, the racism isn't just physical violence, right? Like, I think it's, 
important. Another thing that people do is just really read more about the history of not only Asian American racism, but just racism in general, right? Because it's part of a whole system. It, it's not just because of the coronavirus. There's a, like a long history of it in the United States. Um, so read more about it, get curious, and mm -hmm. um, know that it manifests not just in violence, but also in, um, you know, food insecurity. Like there are a lot of uh, people in our communities who go hungry and, or there's housing issues, right? Where um, immigration issues, there's like so many different ways that um, systemic racism has manifested in the US. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of organizations trying to target and work on each of those issues. Um, so I, I would just invite everyone to, to learn more, get involved. And one thing that I did say on the panel is that I think people often feel like they don't really know if it's their place to help or they feel uncomfortable um, because they might feel like, well, I don't, I really don't know what to do. I don't want to do the wrong thing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Say, like that, that happened, that has definitely happened to me mm -hmm. with like the Black Lives Matter movement. I wanted so desperately to get involved and I didn't really know how to. Um, and I would just, so I'm here to invite you and say you are mm -hmm. welcome. Please join us mm -hmm. and start doing whatever makes you feel comfortable. So for some people, it might be show up at a rally, show up at a protest, you know, just turn up and support that way. Um, if you can't do that, because I know not everyone feels comfortable doing that then, you know, do it in whatever way feels comfortable for you. Um, but know that we, we do want you to join us and everyone is welcome. And, um, and it's important to remember that all communities of color, all BIPOC communities are together. So I have been so overjoyed to see like the solidarity between BIPOC and AAPI communities in this, um, which I think is so important because um, historically Asian and Black communities have been kind of pitted together by the system, by white supremacy. Um, pitted, pitted together, did you say? Pitted against each other. Pitted oh, against right, each other. okay. Where it's like, I don't know if, I mean, just to get into it briefly, um, there is sort of this, there is a model minority myth about Asian Americans that, you know, you've probably heard it like, oh, they're hard workers. You know, they look how successful they are. They're like doctors and lawyers and all this stuff. Right? That stereotype um, was used to basically make other people of color, um, black communities, Latinx communities kind of uh, to basically separate Asian communities from those other communities of color and say, well, look, if you were working as hard as the Asian communities, you'd be fine. Look at them there, you know, and, and keep the, and basically make them feel bad. Right. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, and, and I think that the Asian American communities, like, you know, there was a sense of like, well, you know, if we work hard and, and, become successful in these ways and there's like a proximity to whiteness and that that is somehow like a privileged position right but it's not you know and so some some people were like okay well that's all we can ask for right but it, it wasn't true equality and um and i think now people recognize this so certainly people in our community and people in the other communities of color recognize that this is used to divide us. And now we're like coming together and realizing that we all have mm -hmm. this. You're like, no, enough's enough. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so that was like a, dan that was very dangerous, that thing. And, and there, there historically has been um, some tensions between the communities because mm -hmm. we all, you know, grew up in the system and, and, um, so we're tearing that down and making sure that that doesn't happen, that we all work together. 
Um, so that's a, a short little lesson in this, but you know, there's a, like a lot, a lot more I could say. I could talk for hours and hours about it, but um, that's been I, really. I just think you're so brave. Um, and you know, I'm looking at the comments as you're talking. It's like people are so grateful to you and that you're using your voice um, in this way. And it's not easy. It's, you know, it should be a lot easier, right? To talk about these things, but it isn't. Um, it still feels like, oh, like how is it, how, how are people gonna take, take things? And, you know, you being so open about something really painful that you went through. It, it means so much to people. It's not just the stories that we tell with New Amsterdam. It's like you coming on here tonight and talking about you personally. It, it, yeah, you're very brave. So thank you. Well, thank you for giving space and, um, and wanting to amplify um, the story, the story and, and what I have to say. I really appreciate that. This I could chat. I'm literally could sit and chat to you all evening, but um, I guess we'll just do an hour for now. But maybe we should just keep doing this. I don't know. This we were just riffing, riffing, riffing. This is what we're like in the episode tonight. People are going to see it. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, thank um, you so much for having me. And um, you're awesome. Ag um, you're awesome. And obviously Agnes is in tonight's episode. You're definitely in until the end of the season. So everyone gets to see more of your character. <laughs> yeah, I'm giving you a big hug from a different part of Brooklyn. Mm. <laughs> um, all right, guys, um, I'm signing off now as well. So if you are in the US and you are watching tonight, enjoy the show. Um, and if not, then I'm sorry. You're just gonna have to do something else. I don't know what else to tell you. You're just gonna have to wait. I don't have any answers. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. This is brutal. Mm. I know. It's like, <laughs> like, I feel so bad. I can see all these comments and it's like a lot of people aren't in the US. I'm like, I, I don't know what to tell you. You have to take, take it up with NBC. They're the people should talk to about it. <laughs> okay. Oh, look, Agnes is beautiful. Lots of beautiful too. That's what you're getting. So many lovely messages. Okay. Bye. Bye, gorgeous.